Good morning. So glad to see you all this morning. It may be a little rainy outside, but it's nice and warm and cheery in here. We are glad to be here to gather together to worship the Lord today. Amen. I see we still have more people coming in, so we'll let them continue to gather on in this morning. So it's been a great long weekend, has it not? Everybody enjoy their Thanksgiving? Yes. It was a very, very good uh, time of celebration with family and friends. And last Sunday, we certainly enjoyed gathering with you all also for our Thanksgiving lunch. It was wonderful, wasn't it? So I told someone this morning that I am still waddling from this last week <laughs> with all the food that I had. But you know, celebration time is not over. We are just getting started and getting geared up for the Christmas season now, and by the time you walk in here next week, we will be looking very much like Christmas. So looking forward to that also. And you know, with Christmas right around the corner, we will um, have our Christmas lunch on the 13th of December, which is just two weeks from today. I mean, they fall really fast this time of the year. So that is why we left the tables up instead of turning the sanctuary back around. You know, the thought was that uh, with the next meal only being a couple of more weeks away, there was no need in tearing it down and putting it all back up for that short a span of time. And besides that, it's just a different atmosphere and pretty comfortable to be in here like this, isn't it? So we will leave this this way for the next couple of weeks, and uh, we will plan on having Christmas here. There's one here, here, sweetheart. Um, we'll plan on having Christmas here on the 13th of December. We'll also plan to have a ladies' Christmas party, and we'll do that on Sunday evening, the 20th. And we'll plan on having that in uh, mine and pastor's home. And we'd love for you all to come. That is a fun time together. So when the ladies gather together for Christmas, what we do is we just bring appetizers. And uh, we bring a gift for the White Elephant Gift Exchange. Some people call it that. Some people call it Dirty Santa. But anyway, bring a small gift and we will draw names and have a fun game with each other with that. So that'll be a good time together. And there'll be more to come on that. Also, another announcement that I want to make is our youth, when we had talked about what we wanted to do for the holiday season and how we might be able to use our gifts and to help other people, the original thought was that we wanted to provide meals for someone for Thanksgiving. But there wasn't a family that came up during the Thanksgiving season, but right around that time, we uh, were presented with the opportunity to give gifts through Meals on Wheels for Christmas. So the youth will be planning what we want to do to help with that. And I think the thought behind that is, I think there's how many families, Lori? 16 families that we will be able to help through Meals on Wheels. And it's things that other gov government assistance programs don't help them with to get them through the holidays. And there'll be gift bags that we'll be able to put together as a church for 16 other families to help them through the holiday season. And uh, the youth will be planning that on Wednesday on how we're going to get all of that together. And, you know, with 16 families, we, of course, would love for you all to participate with us, <laughs> if you would. So more to come on that next week as they go through their planning process on Wednesday. So we'll hear more about that. Any other announcements from anybody this morning before we move on into worship? No? Okay. Let's stand our feet this morning. So this morning, we would like to welcome Miss Montague with us. Montague, we are so glad to have you here this morning. Give her a big hand for joining us this morning. <laughs> Recently moved back to the area, and we are so glad to have you back and back here with us. Yeah. All right. Let's bless the Lord this morning. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the opportunity to gather here together today, Lord God. And Lord, we come here with hearts of expectation 
to worship you, to honor you, to hear from you, to receive from you. Lord, everything about you is about relationship, the giving and receiving of love one from the other. And we're here to do that, Lord God, this morning with you and with one another. Lord, we honor you, we bless you, and we praise you today. And Lord, we're here to lift you up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's worship the Lord this morning.
Lord, I trust in you. I believe you're my healer. And I believe you are all I need. And I believe you're my portion. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Sorry. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close nothing can compare you're our living home your presence lord 
I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fly this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fly this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence
as um, I was preparing my heart for worship, the Lord started reminding me of um, things he had shown me this past weekend. I've talked to you all about how um, since my stepfather died, Justin and I have been going to Greenback, and we've been helping my mother with my grandmother's farm. My mom's 70. She has her place to keep. She has my grandmother's place to keep, and we've been going down there for months and months and months, helping to clean out and clear off land and to um, just get that place back where it needs to be. Yesterday, we moved, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we moved out of the outside to the inside of the house. And as we started cleaning out the inside of my grandmother's house, we found all of these papers that were there. And I started looking through those papers, and it was the genealogy of all of my grandmother's family and then all of my grandfather's family. I found all the way back to where on the McCall side, my grandfather McCall, the first person that came over from Ireland and where they settled and where they're buried now and how the property that my mother has, how it even came into the family and how it was given through inheritance and who all of those parents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents. I found the whole history of all of that there in that house. And this morning, what the Lord revealed to me was, you know, that, fam that, that house has been in, in my family for a long time. I mean, my whole life, my mom's whole life, my grandfather's whole life, and on and on back past that. But in that house, all of that history, that genealogy, was there the whole time. I just didn't know it. You see, for me to be able to go back and to look and to see what that inheritance was, what the heritage of my family was, it was there in that place the whole time. And the Lord reminded me that that's how it is with the things of the kingdom of God, too. See, the things of God, the inheritance of God, the things that our Lord has in store for us, they're there the whole time. And sometimes it just takes us looking to find what has been ours the whole time, right? It just takes us looking, it takes us searching, it takes us from our eyes being off somewhere else to looking to find what has been ours the whole time. See, I found out yesterday what my heritage and my earthly lineage was. But our lineage, our heritage, our inheritance through Jesus Christ it's there for us the whole time also. And it only takes us turning our eyes to that place. See, I've thought about this morning all of the years that I have wandered around and I've been searching and looking and had my eyes on all kinds of different things. And the sense of belonging in my family was there before me the whole time. It was just there. And it was like unwrapping a Christmas present when I found that yesterday. Yeah. I found, you know, like I said, the first person who came over from Ireland. I found the history of Greenback, where my family is from and where that property is. I found how it even got its name in all of that paperwork that my grandmother had there in that place. And the thing that I want to encourage us for this morning is not for that earthly heritage, but I want to encourage us for our spiritual heritage. See, sometimes we begin to feel scattered in our lives. 
sometimes we begin to get a little discouraged in our lives. Sometimes we feel like the hopes and dreams that the Lord has placed in our heart, that they just might not come to pass. That maybe I missed it. Maybe it was wrong. Maybe that wasn't what the Lord meant. Sometimes life just starts feeling a little bit heavy for us, doesn't it? And when we have our eyes on those things, we start feeling the weight of them. We start feeling the discouragement of them. But when we stop, when we will pause, and we will put our eyes back upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, hope will begin to rise within our being again. Because we will start feeling His love. We'll start feeling His acceptance. He will start stirring that hope back us back up in us for the things that he has for us. He will place the dreams and visions back in our heart for the things he has. See, he's not called us to be a people to barely get by. He's called us to be a people that are overcomers. He's called us to be a people who are filled with love and joy and righteousness and peace and goodness and rest and contentment and that our days here upon the earth are to be filled with the fullness of his kingdom righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost I'd just like everybody to bow their head right now if you would Father, over these people in this place today. Over our hearts, Lord God. Over the places of discouragement. Over the places that seem hopeless. Over the places that seem empty. empty, Over the places that seem abandoned, Lord God. I just ask right now that the wind of your spirit blow across these places, Father. Father, I ask for your very presence to sweep across this house, to sweep across this place, Lord God. That, Lord, your goodness, your love, and your mercy, Lord God, they will surround us. I pray that by the wind of your spirit you blow out anything that is obscuring your purpose and your path from our lives, Lord. And I pray right now that the visions that you would have us to hope for, the visions that you would have us to reach for, the things that you have for each one of these great people, Lord God, that you will begin to place it before the eyes of their heart right now. Lord, where there needs to be health, we call it forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Where there needs to be peace, Lord God, We call it forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Where love needs to manifest, Lord God, we call it forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, where there are those that need to know the next step to take because it feels like they're just stuck. I pray, Lord God, that you reveal to them the next step that they need to take in this life. 
Father God, where we need to make amends with others, Lord God, I pray that you show us and that you give us the strength and spirit to humble ourselves and to do the very thing that you purpose for us to do. And Lord, I ask you, stir hope in your people this morning. Stir hope, Lord God. Stir vision in your people today. Let it rise like a great swell of a wave and wash over them, Lord God. And fill them with your joy, your love, your peace, your contentment. And Lord, I pray that this week, this very week, that there is movement forward in each and every one of our lives. In the directions that you would have. And obstacles that seem to be in the way, that they will just melt like wax before you. And I thank you for that, Lord. Father, there are those in this room that need to be free. I pray that the bonds that are holding them back, Lord God, will be broken and freedom will be experienced. And Lord, I just thank you for that. Father, we just take a moment to sit before you. To gather in our hearts. To gather in our thoughts. To breathe in, Lord, the freshness of your spirit. To take a moment, Lord God, and just bask in your goodness this morning. Take a moment to just soak in your presence. There is none like you. Absolutely none like you, Lord. None like you. Sandaria <laughs> Shoba baradarada de diara kasandaria kia, yo ho shika bakatandaria kete, yo baradarada de diara kasandaria kate, o baba baradarada da 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 Yo pakashi ka pakashandari ya ki ayo hote Yo da 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 ya Sho ka pakasha da 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 ya Brete ya si ya ba da 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 ya Sho ba ba da 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 Cynthia, the Lord showed me a picture of you just a moment ago. You keep getting um, knocked down. <laughs> it seems like over the past year or two years that every time that you take a step forward and try to pick yourself up, there's been a knock backwards in your life. It's happened one right after the other. 
And it's got you to the point that you're beginning to think, well, what's the point in getting back up? Because if I get back up, I'm just going to get knocked right back down again. The Lord says, no. It is not always going to be this way. And for you to rise back up and you be everything that he has called you to be. You see, the knocks for you, they come pretty hard, but the gift inside of you is even greater. God hasn't gifted you just a little. <laughs> He's gifted you a lot. We all have giftings and callings, each and every one of us do. But the one inside of you, it's very special. He's gifted you to preach. He's gifted you to sing. He's gifted you to prophesy, but even greater than any one of those, he has gifted you with the ability to see people through his eyes. So you have that grace to do that where so many people don't. We see people for their actions. You see people for who they are in Christ. You may get mad for a moment, but that moment passes pretty quickly. And you begin to see the heart that is there. And you begin to see them through the gift of Jesus Christ in their life. And because of the great grace that's been shown to you in your life, you extend great grace to them in their life. And you say to yourself over and over, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to walk in that place anymore. I've done this once. I've done this twice. I've done this ten times. But yet there's something that rises back up in you again that just says, okay, just one more time. Yeah. Just one more time. That thing that rises within your heart is Christ. See, those eyes, those eyes that the Lord has given to you, they'll make a great difference on this earth because you have the ability to spread his life and his love and his laughter. And the Lord says to you today, Cynthia Helton Eldridge, just stand back up one more time. Let me show you. Let me show you what I can do through you. Let me show you what we, what we can do together. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because I've got you. I've got you. You rise back up and you sing my praise. You rise back up and you prophesy my word. You rise back up and you teach my people. You rise back up and you lead with joy and laughter. Because Cynthia Helton Eldridge, people will follow you wherever you go because I've gifted you that way. And when you're down, you pull them down. And when you're up, you pull them up. And sometimes you say in your heart, well, that's not fair. Just can't, can I just be me for a little while? <laughs> yeah, you can't. But I've called you and I've destined you for great things. And you don't want to stay sat down and miss it. And you don't want to stay sat down and have others sitting around you who need to walk on and be who they are called to be too. So today is a day where strength rises in you, where joy rises in you, and the peace of God that passes all understanding encompasses you. And the salve of the Holy Spirit washes across the wounds in your heart and brings healing and wholeness. Today is the day that things change. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you all could just sing that song one more time, we'll move on. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close 
nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence lord i've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord and holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord there's nothing worth more that will ever come close nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence lord i've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence lord and holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord and holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord, oh, your presence, Lord, oh, and Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, There's nothing like his presence. Nothing like his presence. So good, so kind. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to, uh, as Cynthia continues to play, we're going to worship the Lord in our giving. And Bree, and if you can come up and come on up, JC. There's no pressure to give in this place. Uh, you purpose in your own heart what you want to do as far as giving is concerned. And uh, that's, that's the way we operate here. And uh, we love you, and uh, we're thankful for you. You know, this is a thank, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving week, but I'm, I'm always thankful. I'm thankful for what the Lord's done in my life, and I'm thankful for you. So, uh, either one of y'all want to pray? JC, you want to pray? I want to? Huh? Well, we just call this offering blessed, and the people giving, they're blessed. And even those that don't have to give, they're blessed. We're all blessed. All right, girls, you can take up the offering today in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your help.
It is so good to see Monica. You know, uh, 1990, August, I started to work there on 4th Street in Lake City. And about the same week I started that work, that's the same time I met her and her brothers and sisters, or her brother and her sisters, and I've known that family ever since 1990. And I think pretty much so preached about every one of your brothers, sister, or brother and sister's funerals that have passed away. And I, I love that family and uh, so appreciate them. And uh, <clears throat> I want to speak a word over you. Uh, you know, uh, I know sometimes it probably passes through your mind that you're getting down to where it's only you and Betty and uh, what's the other one's name? Uh, Sandy left. And I know sometimes it may pass through your mind, you know, where am I going to fall in the line of, you know, them all passing away. But I heard the Lord say, tell her that she's going to live a long time and that your best days are still ahead of you. They're still ahead of you. God has given you a son. God has given you a son. And you're going to raise John. <clears throat> he is the beloved. When he could have been an outcast, you got him. God gave him to you. And he is your son. And he'll always see you uh, as his mother. And with your eyes, you'll see John worship God. You'll see John serve God. He won't follow the path of his natural dad. He'll follow, follow his spiritual father. And just hang on to that. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There. <laughs> That's the way it works. Oh, amen. It is so good to see y'all. Thank you, Miss Cynthia. Thank you, girls and Dennis and Denise for helping us in our worship this morning. We want to remember Miss Pat's family. Her sister lost uh, her husband this past week, and we want to remember that family in prayer and just uh, ask the Lord to comfort them. I, you know, I hate death. I don't like death. And uh, I just pray that they be comforted in the name of the Lord. It seemed like there was somebody else we needed to, to mention in prayer this morning, but I can't think of who it is. Maybe it'll come to me in just a minute. But the Lord is good. I think Miss Sharon, are you going to take the kids back? She's going to take her kids back. Miss Charity is traveling in Georgia, so. No. That's who I was thinking of. James has got a really horrible injury in his shoulder. He had an accident at work, and they he tore his rotator cuff, right? And from what I can understand, that is a horrible injury. He's in extremely uh, uh, a lot of pain. He's been to the VA hospital, and you know this bothers me. These men and women go put their life on the line, and then when they come back here, in some respects, it's not as bad as it used to be. They're still treated like crap, and uh, that just ain't right. So we ask the Lord to move whatever he needs to move for James, for him to be able to see you know, the people that he needs to see. If not, the Lord supernaturally just touch his body and mend that shoulder in the name of Jesus Christ. So James, be healed in the name of the Lord. Kim, it's good to see you. John, it's good to see everybody. Kelly, it's good to see everybody. Jack, good to see you, sir. And you know, I never mentioned this, but it's good to see Matthew. We love Matthew being here and and being and uh, Barry. So praise the Lord. You know, uh, this past week, um, the Lord spoke something to me. And you know, when the Lord speaks to you, 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 you I mean, you think you got it right off the bat, but you, when the Lord says something to you, you don't get it right off the bat. I'm sorry, you may be smart, but you're probably not that smart. It usually takes a little bit of time of meditating and seeking the Lord in prayer. I know some of the stuff I was sharing back in the 90s when John and them was there. Uh, I, I didn't know what I was preaching, but now I'm beginning to realize. So that's what this means some 20, 25 years later. But I was actually uh, clearing some property. Uh, me and Tammy had some dinner with some friends last night, and I was telling the guy what happened to my face. I got a big scratch here and a big scratch here. He said, what happened to your face? And I said, well, you know, we've been married. Me and Tammy's been married a year and a half. And I said, I thought a few days ago I'd try to talk back a little bit and see how that worked. And I said, this is how it works. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. I was cutting a branch. I was cutting a branch. And uh, as I was cutting this branch, it's this old tree. I forget the name of the tree. It's got thorns all over it. I thought the branch was going to go that way and fall away from me, but it didn't. It supernaturally fell this way and just went... <laughs> And it hit me in the side and stuff. And I got to feel this warm stuff come down my face. And I went, oh. And I went and looked in the mirror and I was bleeding. But anyway, as, as I was clearing that property, 
I love the clear property. It seemed like the Lord had talked to me when I'm clearing property and stuff. But I heard this one word. I heard a name. The Lord spoke a name to me, and he said, Caleb. And immediately I thought, Caleb. And I began to think about the good and the weird things about Caleb. <laughs> yes, come on, Lord. Uh, and uh, I mean, I asked Caleb one day, I said, how you doing, Caleb? And he said, I never thought anybody would give a response like this. How you doing, Caleb? Eating normal. Just kept right on, normal. Okay, that's Caleb. And then I began to realize, you know, that ain't the Caleb. So then I began to process through my mind the other Caleb's that I knew, a Caleb in West Virginia, y'all got a Caleb in your family. I began to process the different Caleb's that the Lord was speaking to me about. And it never, none of those people began to register. And then all of a sudden I thought, Caleb. Caleb in the Bible. Duh. Caleb, why didn't I go there first of all? But anyway, I began to think about Caleb in the Bible. Now, with that being said, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. Can anybody in this room name any... Do you all remember when the 12 spies went in the promised land? And by the way, the Lord never told them to go. They come up with their own ideal. Do you remember the 12 spies that went into the promised land? Can anybody name any of their names? There's 12 of them. Okay, let's take Joshua and Caleb and set them aside. Everybody remembers their name. Can anybody remember the other 10? Why can't you? Oh, yeah, it lists every one of them. It gives their name and their tribe they're from. Can anybody tell me the guy's name from the tribe of Naphtali? If, listen, if anybody can do it, don't get your phone out. Don't get your Bible out. If anybody can start naming some of those names, I'll give you $10 per name. Really will. What's that, what's that music on uh, Jeopardy? Did it, no, that's, that's uh, Exorcist saying I'm thinking about right there. I will. I'll give you $10 per name. Don't get your phone out. You know what? Then a person in this room can name one of those names. I can't either. You know why we can't remember their names? Listen to this now. You know why we can't remember none of their names? Now, we remember Joshua and Caleb. You know why we can't remember none of those other people's names? They brought back a negative report, which says something to me. People don't want to hang around negative people. And when people are spewing out negativity, you don't want to be around that. And what happens to people that are negative? So if you've got negative stuff in your life that you continue to communicate, you've got to watch because what's going to happen is you will fade into obscurity. <laughs> Joshua and Caleb did not fade into obscurity. To this day, we're still talking about Joshua and Caleb. I mean, I was laying there on the ground, bleeding, thinking about nothing. All of a sudden, the Lord spoke Caleb to me, and it was a Caleb from the Bible. And I, got, I sort of got in this trance thing with it. I, I mean, I, just, I was just sitting there. They pulled up in a car right behind me, and I didn't even know they pulled up behind me because I was in a trance. And they got out and said, didn't you hear us pull up behind you? And I, I, Tammy's, I'm sort of new to Tammy's mom, so I didn't want to say, you know, I was in a trance with the Lord. Because I did. <laughs> oh, I'm just laying here acting like I didn't hear nothing. But anyway, Caleb. Do you know what his name means? Dog. Give me my first scripture. And, and stay with me. It won't be long. This is pretty good stuff right here. The Lord just dropped in the spirit. Now, this is the children of Israel. They're getting the land divided out to them. They're getting the land divided out. Watch this now. They're finally in the promised land. The name of my title, the title of my message was Hebron. But anyway, and these are the countries which the children of Israel, is this the King James Version? Yeah. Children of Israel inherited in the land of Cana, which Eliezer the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed for an inheritance to them. Next verse. By lot was their inheritance as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses for the nine tribes and for the half tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of the two tribes and a half tribe on the other side of Jordan, but unto the Levites he gave none inheritance among them. For the children of, for the children of Joseph were the two tribes of Manasseh and Ephraim, therefore they gave no part unto the Levites in the land save the cities to dwell in, which their suburbs for their cattle and for their substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. 
Next verse, please. Then the children of, now watch this, this gets entered. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and watch this, and Caleb the son of, can anybody say that name right there? Jephna, that's a good name. Now, this, this is, watch what it says about Caleb. Caleb the son of Jephna, the Kenzanite. Now, hold it right there. If you will notice, if you will notice how Scripture operates, out of all those people that he's divvying land down to, he pinpoints Caleb, and he not only pinpoints Caleb, he calls his father out and the tribe they're from. Now, I found that interesting. You know what I found out about Caleb? He wasn't a Jew. He wasn't a Jew. Matter of fact, when you look at the Kenzanite and the, the daddy's name, you know where he come from? He come from the immediate, how do I say that word? Edomites, which were descendants of Esau, which were people that continually warred with Israel. Israel hated these people. And these people hated Israel. So you know what really Caleb is? He's a Gentile. He's a half-breed. In other words, he is a dog. He got his name, watch this. Rightly so. Now, I'm not knocking Caleb by his name anyway, but I'm going to say something. No, 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 listen to me. You know, Jesus, you know, back relating to a dog, Jesus said to the Syrophoenician woman, he said, even the dog gets the crumbs from the table. But this guy was an outcast, man. Nobody really wanted anything to do with him. And he, listen, of all the tribes he could have got adopted into, he got adopted into the tribe of Judah. And there's two other people that come into the tribe of Judah that were outcasts. Rahab the harlot and Ruth the Moabitess. And they all got right into the tribe of Jesus. Which means, watch this. <clears throat> Let me say it this way. Have you ever felt like an outcast? Now, now, you know, sometimes you can do stuff that will make people consider you an outcast. Now, that's one thing, but sometimes we get this outcast mentality in our mind. But what I want to show you, honey, that has nothing to do with God. God never considers people outcasts. Now, the other thing I found about Caleb was this. There's a good possibility that the dude got kicked out of the house when he was young. He had to survive on the streets. And somehow, by the grace of God, the the man found himself in the bloodline of Jesus. He found himself in the very tribe that Jesus came out of. And not only that, the dude now is standing here. Standing here about to make one of the biggest demands on Joshua and God that's ever been made up to this point. And another thing I find interesting about Caleb, Caleb was one of the 10 spies or 12 spies that went in the land and him and Joshua was the only two that came back with a good report. Everybody else had a bad report, which brings me back to what I was talking about earlier. If you are a person, watch this, always is publishing good news and you're positive, people will remember you. And when you get down and out, guess what? They're not going to go to the people in negative, or when they get down and out, they're not going to go to the people in the negative. They're going to come to you because they know you've got something positive to say to them. That's why we should always preach the gospel. There's more to preach for than there is against. So stay positive in everything that you do. No matter when you are being put down on every corner, stay positive. Even the people that put you down, stay positive. Don't speak bad against them. Don't speak ill against them because you know what? God is your defender. God, And you know what? When people won't listen to you over here, honey, there's a whole side of the world over here that will listen to you. You understand what I'm saying? So anyway... Here this guy is that is a half-breed, a dog, is about to make a big, huge demand. And the demand that he's, the, the portion of land that he's going to ask for, it's the best portion. Listen to me on this. Sometimes because of, of what we've experienced in our past, we feel like we can't ask or demand for the best. Listen, forget about that. From this day forward, honey, you start to demand and ask for the very best God has because he's done paid for it. Am I making any sense? Yes. Now watch this. You, I mean, if you don't believe me, you, you search the guy's name out. Thou knowest, thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me 
and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Now notice what he says. This half-breed man says, God said something about me. God said something about you. You know your uh, uh, names leave me. Your son? Yes. Javin. And his girlfriend's name is Trina. His wife, okay, Trina. You know, I just, I wish they would have stayed because, I mean, God dropped something in my spirit about her. God has something really good to say about her. God has something good to say about you. The point I'm trying to make is this guy is, is a, a Gentile. He's an outcast, but God way back yonder said something really good about him concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Watch the next verse. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Watch this. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and the children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord have kept me alive as he is sitting. Notice what he said. Behold, the Lord have kept me alive. Watch this. As he has said these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto me, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day four square and five years old. Hold that verse right there. He's saying 40 years ago, God spoke a word to me. And he, he, listen to what he said, and God kept me alive those 45 years. Two years after leaving Egypt, they went into the land, and this guy saw this portion of land, and God promised it to him. And he held on to that promise. And he said something interesting. He said, for 45 years, God kept me alive. And I've waited 45 years. And I wondered if God kept him alive, wonder what he was trying to survive against. He talked about their wandering in the wilderness. Now here's why, and Tammy shared this with me this morning. Here, here's, what he, here's, what he, here's what he had to survive against. For 45 years, he and Joshua had 3 million plus people telling them continually, you were wrong. You were wrong. You were wrong. You brought us out here to kill us. But you know what? He stayed against their words, and he stayed alive. It reminds me of the old BG song, Staying Alive, Staying Alive. They didn't come up with that. Caleb came up with it. Ha, ha, ha. I wish I could sing. I'd sing this message right now. All right, listen, listen to He could have died under their words. He could have died under their condemnation. He could have died under their accusations, but the dude stayed of life. And now he's standing before Joshua, and he's saying, you know what? God gave it to me. God, you was there when God said it about it. And he's got a little bit of an attitude right now. He's probably sort of stomping his feet a little bit. God gave it to me. Can you imagine him even having to live under this? You're a half-breed. You're an Edomite. You're, you're from Esau. He had to live under that stuff. You're a failure. You're this. You're that. But the dude stayed of life and watched this for 40 years, watched him have nine funerals a day he watched people die when he stayed alive and now he's standing here and he's, he's probably putting his finger in Joshua's chest and said that mountain up there it's mine it's mine it's mine and I'm not going to leave here until I get what's mine and it was listen it was the best land you deserve the best I'm sorry I'm tore up next verse He's 85 years old, man. He says, I'm as strong today as I was back when I was 40. And yet as I am as strong this day as I was the day that Moses sent me and my strength was then, even so it is my strength now, for war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, watch this, give me this mountain. It wasn't like, will you give me my mountain? No, give me my mountain. Sometimes you've got to get a little bit, I don't want to say, you understand? It sounded like we're just good Christian people mingling through the land. Pilgrims lost in the world. Get out of here! You will die with that mentality. Sometimes you do, I, some days I've got to climb out of the bed and sit on the bed and say, my body is strong. Because my body will talk back to me and say, you are not strong. It's the same stuff that he's having to deal with. You're not strong. Your back hurts. Your leg hurts. Your mind's weak. You can't remember where you lost your mother-in-law's keys at. Lord, I lost her keys. 
And you know, you go in one room to get something, you get there, you can't even remember what you went for. You may have dementia. you got old-timers. It's not old-timers, it's old-timers disease. And then you want to sing that song, I'm just a pilgrim passing through this land. No, 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 no. You've got to get up and jerk your pants up and pull your dress down or whatever you got to do and say, Hallelujah, I'm strong in the Lord and I'm not leaving here right now. That's a little gas while you're going to the bathroom and go on. Come on, don't get set down on me right now. Now watch this. Now therefore give me this mountain wherefore the Lord spake in the day for thou hast heard us in the day how the Anakins were there. See, I mean, these got the biggest, baddest giant. They're there. And that the cities that were great and fenced, if so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to dry them out as the Lord said. Next verse. And Joshua, now watch this, blessed him. You know what Caleb just did? He brought all this remembrance back to Joshua. And Joshua blessed him. And gave unto Caleb, watch this, the son, name's that guy's name again? The son of Jephunim, how do you say that name? Hebron, born inheritance. Everybody say Hebron. Does it mean what Hebron means? It means the seat of association or the seat of fellowship. So apparently, God had dropped something in Caleb's spirit that there's something special about Hebron. Now, what I want to do for about 10 minutes, I want to talk about the past, the present, and the future that Hebron represented. First of all, give me my next scripture. What was so special about Hebron? Something was special there. Genesis 13, 18. Now watch this. Then it was one of Abraham's favorite places. Now watch this. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain. Everybody say plain. P-L-A-I-N of Mamre, which is in Hebron and built there an altar unto the Lord. That, see, when you read King James sometimes, it's not really plain. But you look at that word plain. If you've got a strong concordance on your phone on your app or got a book strong concordance the word plain right there just looks like a plain level but you know what the word plain really means it means a great oak tree in hebron abraham got a revelation of a great tree that tree that he got a revelation of made hebron become one of abraham's favorite places Matter of fact, in Genesis 23, 18, Hebron is so special that Abraham, the Holy Spirit dedicates one whole chapter with Abraham buying a piece of property for one purpose, and that is to bury his family in Hebron. He buries his Sarah there. Abraham is buried there. Isaac is buried there. And Jacob's buried there. All because he got a revelation of a great tree in Hebron. That's why, Caleb is, that's why Caleb is wanting to reach back to his past. John looked behind him because he heard a great voice behind him in Revelation 1. It's all about the great tree. Now, watch this great tree. Give me my next scripture. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm moving probably way too fast. Just, just watch this great tree. Same great tree, Genesis 35, 1. A few chapters on over. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that, it, that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. And Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Watch this name, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. And let us arise and go to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Now watch this. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob, watch this, hid them, watch the next word, under the oak tree which was by Shechem. It's the same identical tree that Abraham got a revelation of, which says to me, all gods are subordinate to the work of the cross. 
Now, let me, let me get a little bit more on a personal note. My mom and my dad, my mama and my papa, on both sides of our family, there were things I know God told them. There were prayers that they prayed. There were promises that they were made that with their physical eyes, they never saw. There were things that God said to Abraham. There were things that God said to Isaac. There were God the things that said to Jacob that they never got to experience. Abraham got the promise of the land. Isaac and Jacob, they got the promise of the land too because they were associated with Abraham, but they never ever stepped in that promised land the way the children of Israel did. So when Caleb stood there as a outcast in the promised land, he is actually standing in the fulfillment that these people never experienced. I believe I heard the Lord say this today. Both your grandparents on both sides of your family and your mom and dad especially, they were things that they never experienced that I promised them. They never saw it. They never experienced it. I believe I heard the Lord say this. You've got to stay strong because you are the one. You are the one that will fulfill and experience what I told them. And here's the other thing the Lord said to me. When you experience it here, they will experience it there. Honey, you're not just living for you today. You're living for Trula. You're living, I'm not trying to make go, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you are living for your dad. Your dad had some crazy stuff God told him, and he was the only one that could fulfill it because he was crazy enough to believe it. I'm telling you, we got to hang around, honey. We got to stay strong. We can't get that old pilgrim mentality that we're passing through a strange land. Honey, you're not passing through a strange land. You're in the middle of the promised land. And I cannot tell you the days just recently that I felt like an outcast. And now I'm understanding why. You might have been a Caleb, but you know what? Honey, to them you might have been an outcast, but to me, you are the one to fulfill and demand your mountain. And when I get my mountain, they get their mountain. See, I believe these people on the other side. See, we, we got such a warped concept of heaven. Heaven is not what you think it is. We think heaven is a wonderful place filled with glory and grace, not according to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews says, they, without us, have not yet been made perfect. So until we fulfill what we need to fulfill here, heaven will never experience what's going on over there. You understand why? you got loved ones. you got loved ones. I'm telling you, and you, you're living more than just for you. It makes me want to be like those old preachers I grew up around with. Pull your pants up and preach a little bit more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Except when they pulled theirs up, it was hucking and bucking and hell was hot and you felt like a dog crawl out the door. But you see what I'm saying? This dude, man, he, he ain't no ordinary guy. He's had to live under the scrutiny of everybody telling him, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And guess what? You're a Kenzanite. You're from the tribe of the Edomites. They fought with us for years. Well, maybe the reason the Edomites fought with the Israelites, maybe the Israelites were more of the jerks than the Edomites was. We don't ever think that. Maybe the reason us Christians feel like we're so persecuted, maybe we can't get along with nobody. We want to fight with everybody. We know it all. Glory be to God. But I got another scripture there, Grady. Now, now watch this. This is his past. This is his, he, he's reaching back to his past. The other thing I found out about Caleb and Joshua, the reason they came back with a good report and the other 10 came back with a bad report, this is according to the Torah anthology, was when you read Numbers chapter number 13, they went into the promised land, the scripture says, and they went upward, and then they went southward to Hebron. And in Hebron is where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was buried. The Torah anthology says the other 10 passed by the tomb of the patriarchs. They wanted to forget the memory of their past loved ones. But Caleb and Joshua stopped, according to the Torah anthology, and they worshiped God, and they paid respect to their loved ones that had gone on. And when that happened was, Abraham's name means father. Isaac's name means laughter. Jacob's name got changed to Israel, which means 
prince who has power with God and man. So when they left that tomb that day, they went into the promised land to look at the giants. They had a whole different attitude than the other ten did. You understand what I'm trying to say right there? That was the past that he was remembering. He was associating himself with the past. See, there's a lot of stuff in the past you don't need to forget. When David got in a bad, bad way, he, he, he remembered his victory over Goliath. And he said, bring me the sword of Goliath. I remember one time being in a group of people, and I said, let me, let me, can I remind you all of some of my victories? And they almost cussed me like a dog. See, I want to remember the good, let's see, how I want to say this. A wise old man one time, I wish I could cut that camera off, but I can't right now. A wise old man said this, and I'll never forget this. When David Huskins passed away, somebody was saying something to this wise old man up in his 80s, and he said, hush, 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 don't, don't tell me the bad stuff. He said, I don't want to never remember the bad stuff about nobody. I just want to remember the good about them. Good Lord, wisdom. Wisdom. That's why when people pass away, you can let a scoundrel pass away, be the biggest scoundrel in the world, and the preacher will get up and he'll say, good things over that person. I used to think, they're standing there lying. They're lying. But you know what? That's the heart of God. That's God. Now, his present was when he stood there before Joshua, and he said, I want that mountain right there. I want that mountain. But what I really want you to focus on right now is this is a prophetic word for everybody in this room. Listen, it's a prophetic word for everybody. There was, there was another reason, not this past and present, but there was another reason that had to deal with the future, that Caleb demanded that land. He stayed alive for this one purpose. Now, I want that one. I want Second Samuel. Look here. What's that word? Look who's in Hebron now. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all of Israel and Judah. Next verse. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem. Can you back up a few verses? There's a name I'm looking for. Verse 3. So all the elders of Israel came to the king in Hebron. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed King, or they anointed David King over Israel, guess where? In Hebron. Now, I, I, I want to make sure you follow me on this. If Caleb had have never made his stand for Hebron, there would have never been a king named David of all the places to be anointed, anointed in Hebron. Now the point I want to make right here, and I'm about finished, is this. This is a prophetic word. It's for me, it's for you. There is a David, or Davids, in your future. There's Davids in your future. Hundreds of years behind David, there was a man by the name of Caleb that stood up and said, I'm not only associated with the past victories of my family, and I'm not only going to experience a victory here, but there's greater victories in the future. Because this man named David, he did something that nobody else ever did. What I'm trying to say is, there's some stuff in your near future that nobody else in your family has ever experienced. You write, take your piece of paper, write this date down and say, there was this crazy preacher that said this. And I'm basing it on the word and what I feel in the spirit. Now let me read right on. So all the elders gathered and they anointed David king in Hebron. Next verse, David. David was 30 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem under the Jebusites, 
the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither. Thinking David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, watch this, David took the stronghold of Zion. The same is the city of David. You know what David just did? David did something that nobody in his past was ever able or capable of doing. He took the stronghold of Zion. Now that has an implication too. Things, dreams that you don't, listen, dreams that you didn't even know you had is about to wake up. This ain't one of these little good little rainy Sunday morning messages. Hope he gets through. We can go eat somewhere. No, no, I'm, this is profound. I'm if it's not for you, it's for me. But I believe it's for everybody. They stuff about to wake up. I heard the Lord say this to me. I hear, I hear, I hear people saying stuff like this. Dream your dreams. Experience your dreams. But I heard the Lord say something really different about dreams the other day. He said, sometimes dreams need to be redirected. You know what David does? David's not only a dreamer, he's a guy that redirects dreams. So what he does, he takes the stronghold of Zion. I don't know if I gave you this scripture or not. Give me Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm finished. Verse 18. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burn with fire, nor unto the blackness or the darkness and, and tempest. Watch this. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the words should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded. See, there's a lot of people right there. They're just, and if so... Much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Watch what he says right here. But ye are come. Read. What if Caleb had a backbone like most people have today and never stood his ground for Zion, Hebron. I guess what I'm trying to say, what you're living for today has strong implications to the future. So the words that you hear, live through them. That's the live through the words you're hearing. They're just words. You know what Jacob did with a pile of stones when he, when he had that dream? You know what he did with those pile of stones? The scripture says he gathered the stones and made him a pillow. And the next morning, it wasn't stones, but it was a rock. When people throw words at you, you know what you do? Just gather them up, lay down, go to rest on them, sleep on them. And dream visions of God. I don't, I don't feel like I'm making myself plain. This is so real in my heart. Is there's Davids in your future. You can't, you can't smoke out now. You can't die now. You can't give up now. You can't back up now. No matter what your eyes see. See, sometimes it's not what people outside you say. It's what's in your head talks to you about. I mean, they're one thing, but when your head starts talking to you, it gets crazy sometimes. You get schizophrenic. You get bipolar sometimes spiritually. You ever been spiritually bipolar? You up one day, down the next. Hallelujah. Worshiping God today, cussing tomorrow. Well, not even tomorrow. An hour later, you're cussing. Now raise your hand. See, that, David was that way. David was somewhat, I mean, he got up one day, he was high. The next day, he was low. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel this so strong to me. This is more than just a little glory, Halle be your message. It's just, man, these David's in my futures. These David. And it's not way, when I say future, not way down the road. It's here. See, your future can look like a mist. And I've seen this the other day, too. Your future can look like a mist, a fog that you can't see nothing into. But I've seen a David walking out of that fog. I saw 
I saw victory walking out of that fog. I, I saw my mama standing in heaven saying, finally, what I prayed for is here. And it was like I was joining that great cloud of witnesses that was there. I was, join, I was bringing them back here. And we were celebrating together the good things of God. I know people think I'm crazy, but sometimes you've got to be crazy to believe some of the things of God. You, don't, you think crazy? How would you like to get up one day and go home and tell your wife, you know what the Lord showed me? A virgin's going to have a baby. Glory be to God. How would you like the same prophet get up one day and go home and tell your wife, say, the Lord told me to walk around town naked for three and a half years. <laughs> Hallelujah. She probably said, you watching the Playboy channel, whatever channels, and I don't know anything about them. <laughs> and you know what he did? He walked around for three and a half years naked. Now, I don't know how that works. But we still want to play safe church. Stay in the logic of your religious thinking. Honey, let me tell you something. David is going to walk out of fog. David's going to walk out of the mist. I'm not just talking about that King David. I'm going to talk about the greater son of David. His name was Jesus. He's coming out of the fog. I feel like a mad, slobbering dog like Caleb now. He's coming out of the fog. You may be considered a Gentile today, but tomorrow, honey, your enemies will celebrate you. Because the goodness of God that comes to your life, you'll be like the four lepers. We'll be like the four lepers. We don't be good to hoard all this up right here. Let's take it back to the city. Let's bless those that cursed us. And you know, we're all being cursed. And we've cursed people too. But anyway, my point I wanted to make was, honey, Stand your ground. Dig your foot in the dirt. You may look like a failure, but that's just the way maybe your mind's looking and people are looking at you. You're not a failure. Maybe your lineage is from the Edomites. It's better than the Sodomites. I can't get, avoid the smile. I'm trying to... Or the... Oh, let hush. We all got that background back there, but that's the part we don't want to remember. Listen, if God can take a Rahab, if God can take a Caleb, and God can take a Ruth, and not put them in just any in particular one of the 12 tribes, put them in the tribe of Judah. This dude was a part of the tribe of, you know what? Jesus didn't come out of the Levitical priesthood. Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah. Now I see why he picked the 12 that he picked. These guys were not who we would pick. You know, I understand why Paul now says, you know, we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I used to get confused when I go to graveside service. I mean, I've, I've been to hundreds of graveside services. Growed up, Daddy taking me to funerals. We used to go watch and bet on who was going to pass out and who would cry and who wouldn't cry. I mean, as kids, I mean, you've got to get entertainment. You don't need to play with you and do some kind of stuff, you know. I asked the undertaker one time, could I have the smelling sauce so when people passed out, I could give them the smelling sauce. It's not what we think. God is a merciful God. I believe what we do here impacts what we do there. If you bind it here, it's bound there. That's what he said. If you loose it here, you loose it there. I believe when old Caleb got up that day and stood in front of Joshua and said, give me my mountain, I believe Abraham punched Isaac and said, you better, come here. Isaac looked over at Jacob and said, you better go get Sarah. And they all began to look into Caleb and say, you know what? What we didn't get to experience, he's about to bring us into. It's a work of the cross. The cross reaches back, forward, Brings all men into the now. I believe when I start to 
I know some people think I need medicine and stuff, but I believe when I begin to think about seeing Jesus walk out of the fog of my future and walk into the midst of me just experience some of the craziest realities of the kingdom. I believe mama punches daddy and says, you thought he was crazy, but look, look what he's doing. He's bringing us into his reality. I can just imagine my mama, who always thought I was crazy, getting up and saying, there he is, and thinking, you know what, he's not crazy. It takes crazy people to believe some stuff. And I'm crazy. Some days I might need medicine. But I'm crazy. for Jesus. Anybody that tells little kids on the school bus that Sonny Claus got arrested for a DUI, he's crazy. <laughs> the other day I sung, uh, you know, Sonny Claus coming to town. I didn't sing Sonny Claus coming to town. I said, Sonny Claus is coming to the school bus. One of them said, I thought you said he got arrested. I said, well, he's out of jail now. He posted bond. <laughs> but you know what one of those kids do? They get on that bus every day and hug me. They hug me. I remember the good about everybody in this room. I'll always remember the good about you. Stand up. I'm just standing here right now like I was in that trance the other day. There, you know, there's, there's certain dogs, you know, that they're just tenacious. And they won't be denied. Pit bulls are that way. They won't be denied. You know, you've got the bad side of the reason they might have named him a dog. But I believe when God looked at it, he said, you know what, this guy ain't going to be denied. He's going to bite into this. He ain't going to turn loose until he gets exactly what he wants. I guess the greatest delivery I'm experiencing is not delivery from... You know, the expectations of people. I'm being delivered from myself. Because I heard Lynn Howell say one time, he said, the enemy has been found, and it's us. We're our own worst enemy. Yeah. You know, one of the greatest messages I heard David Huskins preach, and I heard him preach to many of them. He preached, he said, they might have went into a harlot's house, but when they came out, they didn't bring a harlot out. The scripture says they brought the woman out. I often thought about this is, where'd those guys, how'd those guys know where her house was? Well, the Lord led them there. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. These are David about to walk out of the mist of the fog of your future. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged what you see with your natural eyes. Don't be discouraged what you feel in your emotions. Your emotions are crazy. And you're talking about crazy, your emotions are warped. I thank God for them. Now, when they get saved, they're going to be real good emotions. But right now, they, they need medicine. <laughs> My soul still is being saved. It's crazy. It's like a billy goat. It don't eat anything. There's a David coming. You know, even David in his natural appearance wasn't what they thought would king would be. You're the greatest people I know. You are. Not because you're here. It's because you're God's people. That's why you're great. Father, I bless this special group of people. I just love you. And Lord, where I've been scattered, you bring the pieces together. Just like the children of Israel was there in that land, that land was being divided out, Lord. You brought it together under a man by the name of Joshua. Lord, you're bringing all things together under the man Christ Jesus. 
That's why the Apostle Paul says in the book of Thessalonians, there's a great gathering together unto the Lord. The missing pieces are coming together. Father, I prophesy over this people. And I say in the name of the Lord Jesus, there's a David walking out of the fog of the future. And what was once futuristic will become now. And the good of the past, Father, is not left in the past. It's brought to now. Because today is a day of salvation. I need the good of my past and I need the greatness of my future to come together today. That's the work of the cross. In the man Christ Jesus. And today, may we experience paradise. And Father, I pray, I pray this over the, the, all, every one of us. It's not so much that we need to dream again. It's Father, our dreams need directions. And David will give our dreams. Jesus will give our dreams directions. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Love on three or four people there, five or six people, and just let them know how blessed they are. We love you. Have a good week in the Lord.